So uh, two pillows and we will start on our backs. So to start on your back, I would like you to take one of the pillows and have it under your head, um, but just one so your head's not like curled all the way up, but just a little bit lifted. And start just by laying down on the ground with your head on the pillow and have the pillow, the bottom of the pillow line up with the top of your shoulders. So your shoulders aren't lifted, but your head is. And then take, uh, take a few moments to, with your knees bent and your feet on the ground, take a few moments to just get settled there. And if you are quite tight in your neck, shoulders or back, it might take a while to get settled there. So let's just allow ourselves that time um, because this, this time for practicing yoga is for you to do that, <laughs> to do exactly that, to give yourself the time you need to feel better. So take your time and try to allow your mind and your internal awareness, your inner visualization to just scan around and notice how everything feels, what you might still be clenching, what you can let go of, or what might take a bit more effort to let go of. And sometimes when we do have a bit of pain in our bodies, our minds can get really down or distracted or feel helpless. Our brains can tell us all sorts of stories that aren't necessarily always true. So take this time to let yourself hear those stories. Like, okay, I'm listening, but I don't believe everything you're saying sort of thing. <laughs> um, and remind yourself that you can find ways to manage and live with that discomfort. And sometimes it's not taking it away, but it's finding a way to be okay with it. You might find that certain parts of your body sort of creep their way back into that habit of tensing or clenching. So just try to release it whenever you notice it come back. Now start, I'd like you to start just trying to allow your tongue to become soft in your mouth. That's just going to be the beginning of our practice. It's just letting your mouth get relaxed. So try not to let your tongue press up against your teeth or the roof of your mouth, but just be soft. And as your tongue and your mouth start to become a little bit soft, also add in just trying to scrunch up your face and then relax it from the scrunch. Like similar to how sometimes we'll like scrunch our fists and then relax our arms and fists. Just do that with your face. So like scrunch up your eyes or your fore forehead or your eyebrows. Maybe even like if you're able to wiggle your ears or lift your cheekbones, clench your jaw, and then relax it. And do that a few times with different parts of your face. Lift your eyebrows like you're surprised, and then relax it all. And then I'd like you to take your thumbs, 
to the space between your eyebrows and with your thumbs together. So like the, the outer edges of your thumbs, press them together and then press the pads of your thumbs to the space between your eyebrows. And just gently start to just trace the top arch of your eyebrows out toward your temples. And just do that, say three or four times, just nice and slowly, starting from between the eyebrows that just go up and above and out to the outsides. And then slowly continue, as you get your thumbs out to the temples on this next one, bring your hands down and just trace your thumbs around the bottom of your jawline. And just do that a few times from temples around the outer edges of your face, down your jawline to your chin. And do that three or four times. One more time. And then I'd like you to take your peace fingers and place them on your jaw muscle. So if you clench your jaw, you'll feel that masticator muscle, that big muscle at the edges, the corners of your jaw. And I want you to feel that and then soften that clenching and gently just rub little circles to where that muscle clenches too. And then let your hands start to release down. And I'd like you to reach your right arm out to the side and it can be either straight out to the right or more like a Y shape rather than a T or like a cactus, just as long as your arm is extended out to the side and your palm is facing up. It doesn't matter how bent your elbow is or how straight your arm is or even what direction it's facing. But as your right arm is out to the right, then slowly turn your head to the left and with your left hand, I want you to just gently rub up and down from your jawline to your collarbone. So there's this muscle, the SCM, the sternocleidomastoid, sterno, I said it wrong. The SCM muscle goes from your collarbone to your jaw. And just gently rub up and down. And if your skin is a little bit dry or sticky, then just rub more gently or use a cloth if you have one or like a, a massage ball if you've got one. It doesn't need to be hard, it doesn't need to be aggressive, just a loving rub or warming of the area. And then start to rub and almost like pull the skin from the side of your neck where your spine is, your cervical spine on the right side. Sort of pull it forward as if you're trying to like Drag that tension from your neck all the way forward to the middle of your collarbone. Just a few pulls. And do one more of those. So I'm not crossing over the spine, but just from the neck on the right side, pull forward to the front. And then keep your left hand just somewhere on your chest and your right arm extended. And I'd like you to then start to walk your feet a little bit further apart from each other. Keep your knees bent. And with your upper body staying still, after all that gentle movement, I'm just gonna gently add some movement into the lower body. So let your right knee drop down and in toward your left foot. And then slowly bring it back up. 
really slowly just continue to do that a few times. And start to bring your left knee in. So both knees will drop over to the left, not touching each other as they go down, but just going up and then to the left. Slowly and softly, as little effort as possible. Let's do two more of those. Bring your knees back up. Take your feet a little bit closer together again. And slowly bring your head back towards center. Keep your left hand where it is, but I'd like you to take your right hand and start to reach it toward your left thigh. Or just, it doesn't need to touch even if you, can, if you can't make it that far. But reach it in that direction. And we're, we're going to really slowly just pull your chin in towards your neck. And as if you're rolling yourself up off the ground, Roll toward that left side. So your left, right hand slides along your left thigh and then unroll yourself back to the ground. And do that two more times. Slowly roll yourself up and slightly to the left. And slowly roll back down. And one more time. And then bring your head back to center. Take your hands onto your belly. Maybe let your knees rest against each other and just rest for a few breaths, just letting yourself settle into that asymmetry of the work on one side and not yet on the other. Just giving yourself a chance to compare and contrast. And slowly let your eyes open, or you can keep them closed if that feels comfortable. We'll move on to the other side now. So I'd like you to take your left arm out to the left, uh, palm up, and again, that same option of having your arm bent or straight or out to the side or up more like a Y, whatever works best for this shoulder joint. And it's probably going to be a little bit different than the other side. Slowly turn your head over to the right. And then with your right hand, just gently massage that line from your jawline, from the corner of your jaw, along your neck, down to your collarbone, and along your collarbone, back up to your jawline, using as much or as little pressure as you want, just giving yourself some attention in that area, up and down. This is also really nice to do if you have like um, one of those gua sha stones, or if you don't have one of those, just uh, a ball, <laughs> just a tennis ball, just roll it up and down. And now start to take your right hand all the way around your neck to the left side of your cervical spine, to your neck. And then sort of pull, like you're almost grabbing and trying to pull those muscles that tense up around your neck and try to bring them forward. And do that a few times. And because it's your own body and your own strength and tension, you can know how much to put into it. You know what feels right and what feels good.
Let's do two more. This side is much more tight on me. And one more. I'm going to keep your right hand on the left side of your chest or on your collarbone or neck, wherever it feels good, and let your knees separate and your feet widen. And just start to slowly let your left knee lower down toward your right foot. Just slowly drop it in and bring it back up. Down and up a few times. And start to add your right knee to it. So both knees are starting to go over to the right, not landing on each other, but just flopping over to the right and coming back up. Slowly and soft. And allow both knees to come back up. Stay up and bring your feet just slightly closer together. And let your head come back to center. And with your right arm staying over towards the left, bring your left arm across to the right. I'm pretty sure my left arm is shorter than my right because this side doesn't reach as easily. <laughs> and slowly start to bring your chin up into your chest and roll yourself up and over to the right, letting your left arm slide along the right leg and slowly roll yourself back down. Roll yourself up. And unroll yourself. And two more of those. And last one. And come back to center and bring your body back to center. Knees rest against each other. Hands to your belly and take a few breaths. We're going to slowly start to make our way onto our bellies. So I'd like you to roll over to one side and we're going to use one or two cushions under your chest. So your chest is slightly lifted. And if you're quite gifted on the chest end of things, you might want to have one cushion under each armpit instead of under your chest directly <laughs> because some people don't like laying and putting that much pressure on their chest. So it's up to you. Your head is going to be slightly lifted, and that's sort of the goal. I want you to have your arms out to the side in a cactus shape. Now, bring your chin down towards your chest. So just your forehead is touching the ground, but your chin is tucked up away from the ground. So the back of your neck is nice and long. Arms in a cactus. And I'd like you to just start to lift your arms up just a little bit and then lower them back down. Try to keep your legs long and heavy and not involved in this lifting work. Lift your arms up like your cactus is trying to take off and lower back down. 
do three more of those lift and lower lift and lower and one more lift and we're going to keep it lifted and keep your elbows bent but bring your elbows down and in toward the sides of your waist so your arms are sort of staying at that 90 degree angle and reach them back up toward the cactus the floating flying cactus and come back in like you're tucking your wings in elbows by your sides and then bring your wings back out to that flying cactus and one more time wings in and wings out and place your arms back down take your left arm and extend it out to the side lift your head up and take your right hand and tent your fingertips out to the side i'll show you on this side so my my right hand is going to be tented elbow pointing up but we're doing it with the left arm extended right arm up and we're just going to slowly use that right hand to press yourself and roll yourself over toward your left side and slide your left hand out just a little bit, not a huge amount, and then come back in as you exhale. So it's like you're inflating the right side of your ribs and it's rolling you over to your left as you inhale and exhale back to your belly. And one more time, inhale. And exhale and swap sides. Take your right arm out to the side, tent your left fingertips with your left elbow pointing up like a finger sand cobra sort of thing. And then press into your left hand as you inhale, inflate your left lungs and roll slightly to the right and come back onto your belly. Inhale, roll to your right. Exhale, back to your belly. Two more. And one more. Take both hands into that finger stand cobra and try to lift your shoulders, the fronts of your shoulders up away from the ground and slide your shoulder blades back as you just do a little tiny lift to inhale and exhale to lower back down. Inhale, slowly lift. Exhale, lower back down. Two more. Inhale. And exhale. Last one, inhale. And exhale. Now I'd like you to lift up enough. I'm going to get you to take your right arm forward, bend your elbow, and make a little pillow for your forehead. So I want you to rest your forehead on your right forearm. And then take your left arm and sort of do the opposite. Wrap it back behind you and have your forearm wrap around your low back. Now, if your left shoulder feels like it's really heavy, take one of your other pillows and put it under that left shoulder. So it's sort of propped up. I'm even gonna fold my pillow. And we're just gonna rest there for a few breaths. So this is very similar to, but not quite the same as. It's in the same family as. It's like a distant relative to the cow-faced arms. The gomukasana arms. Take two more breaths here. Mm -hmm. 
Lift your head. Slowly remove your pillow from under your right shoulder and release your arms and just gently bring them back around to the other side. So your forehead is resting on your left forearm now. You might want to fold up a pillow to go under your right shoulder and take your right arm around and behind your low back. This side is much more tight. It's almost tingling into my arm, so I'm glad the pillow is there to take away some of the intensity. Two more breaths. And slowly lift your head. Release your arm. Release your pillow. We're going to make our way very slowly into a child's pose. Your knees can be together or apart. Your forehead can rest on your pillow or not. But I'd like your arms to be very softly forward. So not an, an aggressive reach, just a soft reach forward. Gently come up to hands and knees, please. I'm gonna get my hair out of my face so that I can try to demonstrate better. <laughs> so much hair. Okay, hands and knees. Have your knees under your hip joints. So your knees aren't together and touching, but they are underneath you. I'd like you, we're just gonna sort of almost make like an S shape with our hands. So I'm gonna start with my left hand over towards the top right corner of your mat and sort of slide it around like you're drawing a big S that curves around between your right hand and knee and then around and reach it back. And you can't quite get that back bottom flip of the S because your legs are in the way and then come back up. So you're sort of sliding around, curving from the top right around to the left through your arm and leg over to the right again and trying to get to the left. And allow your body to start to move and flow with it. So your hips can start to slide a little bit side to side, your head, your shoulders. And let's do two more. And one more. And come back to hands and knees and go straight into the other side, letting your right arm go up to the top left corner, around to the right, through your arm and leg, and over to the left. Like you're trying to thread your arm under your left ankle, but you can't because we don't have gadget arms. And just do that back and forth, backwards S, or maybe a Z. 
without the hard corners. A soft Z. <laughs> Let your body get into it. Come into the last two. And the last one. And come back to hands and knees and slowly bring your legs in to sit back on your heels. Sit on your shins. And I'd like you to take your hands behind your back and interlace your fingers. And like you're trying to reach your knuckles down to the ground or down to your big toes. Reach down. Try to keep your ribs in as if your ribs are trying to thread themselves backwards through your arms. And slowly lower your chin down to your chest as if you're trying to roll yourself up. Or roll yourself down, I should say. And then slowly, without sticking your ribs up and forward, lift your chin up to the sky. And then roll yourself back down towards your legs. And I'm not doing a very big forward fold or, or rounding forward. Because my arms are sort of keeping me from doing that as they reach down toward my big toes, but it's creating a, a reaction that I can feel all the way down the erector spinae muscle, which is the muscles that are on either side of your spine that can get really tight. Do one more down. And one more up. Now keep your left hand, come back to center and keep your left hand reaching back down toward your right big toe. And if it can touch it, that's great. But this time bring your right hand in front of you and around to your left thigh. We're gonna do the same sort of thing, but rolling down slightly toward the left. So it's a very small, not a complete roll, because I don't know anybody who can actually roll themselves up, but similar. So slightly rotated to the left. Keep your spine slightly vertical and your left arm is going to stop you from going too far forward, but bring your chin down into your chest, into your neck and roll yourself down and slightly to the left. You'll probably get a little bit further than you did centered, but I don't want you to try to force yourself into too much just until you feel that sensation and staying with that rotation to the left as your chin goes up and down. Give yourself room to adjust as you feel fit but keep rolling slowly up and down. We'll do one more. And slowly come back and untwist yourself and gently continue to the other side. Take your right hand behind you toward your left foot. Take your left hand over to the right thigh and slowly roll down and over to the right. And slowly unroll. This side gives me a lot more space to roll myself up. And your pelvis will be doing a little bit of a tuck and tilt as well as you do this. Just let it happen. There's nothing too strict about it. If you're feeling something, you're doing something. Last one. And 
and slowly come back to center as you finish and bring yourself around to sitting on your bum or on a cushion or two. Sit cross-legged or have your shins in front of each other. But I'd like you to have um, your left hand out to the left. I'm not going to try mirroring. Zoom mirroring confuses me so much. <laughs> and take your right hand behind your head. So your thumb is gently holding like the soft bit of your neck just at the base of your skull. And keep your elbow reaching out. It's tempting to let your elbow want to come in. Try not to let it because we will eventually. So I want you to push down with your left fingertips, tented to the left. And rotate and reach over like you're trying to look at your right elbow. I don't want you to lean or shrug into that left side. Just gently pushing the floor away from you as you rotate and look up to the right. And then slowly, as if you could even take away any weight from your left hand, rotate around. And now we're going to let that right elbow sort of mask our face. Like we're trying to hide our face as we rotate slightly to the left like we're trying to tap the right elbow to the left armpit, but that's impossible. And then untwist yourself and reach and look over your right elbow up into the right. And exhale, try to bring your right elbow into your left armpit. And two more of those. Inhale. And exhale. Last one. And come back to center. Take your right hand down. Swap whichever shin is in front. Right fingertips on the ground. Left hand behind your head with your thumb gently just pressing up into that little soft bit at the base of your skull. Press down with your right fingertips as you rotate up into the left to try to look at your left elbow. And as you exhale, try to bring your left elbow into your right armpit. Inhale, look up and over your left elbow. Try not to lean onto your right hand. It's just there to stop you falling over. And exhale, bring your elbow into your armpit. And last two of those. And the last one. And come back to center. Slowly release your left hand down. I'd like you to come around and into a downward facing dog, please. Nice and slowly. From your down dog, what we're going to do is Take an inhale to gently place your knees on the ground and reach your right arm forward. And then as you exhale, take your right hand back down, slowly go back to the down dog, and then reach your right hand toward your left ankle. So it's a slow movement that goes from down dog, slowly to hands and knees, Slowly reach your right arm forward and then back to hands and knees, back to down dog, and then tap your left ankle with your right hand. Two more using the right arm. Down dog. Tap the ankle. And last one. Reach forward. Hands and knees. Down dog. 
Tap your ankle. Come back to down dog and step your left foot between your thumbs. Turn your right toes out for warrior one legs and reach your arms all the way up. Come up to warrior one. And as you exhale, bring your hands out to the sides. Put a little bit of a softness in your elbows. And try to reach your thumbs a little bit further back without pushing your ribs further forward. Maybe even a little bit of like a like a quarter of a forward fold just to take a bit of pressure out of your low back. Two more breaths. And last breath. Slowly lower your arms down. Lean into your left foot to step your right foot forward. Have your feet a little bit wider than hip distance apart. And then bring your arms forward and take your right arm underneath your left. Either hug yourself, cross your forearms, or eagle your arms. And take a big breath in to reach your forearms up. Keep your elbows as far away from your face as you can. And as you exhale, bend your knees, hinge at your hips, and slowly fold forward to let your forearms get really heavy. Let your head get really heavy and flutter out through your lips for three exhales. One more of those. Stay in that dangly forward fold as you unravel your arms. Let your palms come to the ground and slowly walk your feet back to another down dog. Psych yourself up to the other side. Because from down dog, we slowly go to hands and knees. Slowly reach your left arm forward. Back to hands and knees. Back to down dog and tap your right ankle with your left hand. Boop. Back to down dog, hands and knees, left arm forward, hands and knees, down dog, tap your right ankle, hands and knees, Left arm forward, hands and knees, down dog, tap right, one last time, down dog, hands and knees, reach forward, hands and knees, down dog, Tap the right ankle. Back to down dog. And now step your left, sorry, nope, right foot forward. Uh, left foot turns out. Flatten your foot to the ground. Keep your right knee bent as you reach your arms up to the sky. Warrior one. Uh, and open your arms out, same as the other side. Palms up, soft elbows. And try to keep your elbows, or sorry, your elbows and thumbs actually reaching back without pushing your ribs forward. And then hinge your hips to fold forward a quarter of the way, maybe even only a fifth, a little bit, just a little bit. As if you're trying to pick your right foot up off the ground, just a little bit. One more breath. Slowly lower your arms down. 
Lean into your right foot. Step your left foot forward. Have your feet slightly wider than hip distance. Arms forward to wrap your left arm underneath your right, either crossing at the forearms, hug yourself or eagle arms. And then inhale to lift those eagle arms up. And as you exhale, bend your knees just a little bit, hinge at your hips just a lot. Fold forward to get really heavy forearms, really heavy elbows. And three, increasingly long, flutter out the lips as you exhale. Stay heavy in your forward fold as you unravel your arms. Take your fingers to the ground and slowly roll yourself back up to standing for four, three, two, and one. Bring your feet hip distance apart in parallel. And then as if you're on tracks, step your left foot back just so your big toe is sort of in line with your right heel. And your left heel, I'd like it to be off the ground so your knee can be bent. So it's there for balance. Reach your arms all the way up to the sky and grab your left wrist, please, and rotate your body slightly to the right. Let your feet be flexible on the ground but not come off the ground. And as you're rotating to the right, we're gonna once again, Roll ourselves down to the ground. So as if you could roll up like a yo-yo bear. Or roll down. We always say roll up, even if you're going down. Over to the right. Most of the weight's in your right foot, but there's still some in the left to stop you from falling over. And then stay to the right as you roll yourself back up. And as you come back up, un rotate, unrotate yourself, straighten yourself, release your hands from each other. Keep weight in your right foot and step your left foot back to the back of your mat and turn your toes all the way out to the left for warrior two legs, but it's at a slight angle. Reach your arms out and have your palms face the long side of your mat, please. Like your right knee to be bent, left leg straight. And look over towards your left thumb. Take a big breath in. And as you exhale, sweep your left thumb. Keep your gaze on it all the way around to rotate until you clap, like you're giving yourself a high five over to the right. Inhale to open up. Keep your gaze on that left thumb. Exhale, slowly glide around. Clap. And one more time. Inhale. And exhale. Nice work. High five, me. <laughs> Rotate your left heel back up so you're facing the short edge of your mat. Take a big breath in to reach your arms up. And as you exhale, step up to a forward fold. Ah. Slowly roll yourself up to standing for four. Three. Two. And one. Head is last to lift. Feet hip distance apart and parallel. Put weight in your left foot. Step your right foot back so your big toes in line with your left heel. A little bit of a lift of that right heel. Most of your weight's in your left foot. Inhale your arms up to the sky and grab a hold of your right wrist with your left hand. Slowly rotate your body to the left. Let your feet be flexible but try not to pick your toes up off the ground and slowly roll yourself down over towards your left pinky toe. Stay to the left as you roll yourself back up. Uh, 
And as you get back up, right, straighten your body out, put weight in your left foot to step your right leg all the way back, pivot your toes to face the long edge of your mat and reach your arms open for warrior two. Your body will be at a slight angle, that's okay. Nobody's coming to check. Bend your left knee, have your palms face the long edge of your mat and turn your head over to keep staring at your right thumb. Take a breath in, and as you exhale, slowly bring your right thumb all the way around to give yourself a high five to the left. Inhale to open up. Try not to let your left knee follow. And exhale, high five. And one more time. Scratch your nose if you need to. And exhale. Pivot your right heel up, reach your arms up to the sky, take a big breath in, and exhale to a standing forward fold. Wow. Walk your feet back to a downward facing dog. Gently place your knees down onto the ground. Point your toes, sit back on your heels, and take your hands up to the back of your head, thumbs at your the soft bit of your skull where it meets the top of your neck, fingertips grabbing your skull, elbows out wide, take a big breath in as you lift your breastplate up and your elbows back. And as you exhale, squeeze your head and round your back like you're hiding. And then inhale to peekaboo. Lift your head up, lift your chest up and your elbows out. And exhale, round yourself in and squeeze your head. Two more of those, inhale. Like a blossoming flower. Exhale, like a hiding kitten. Inhale. And exhale. Lift your head up, let your hands come back down and slowly make your way back onto your back. Use a pillow or don't, it's up to you. But come back to where we first started for a few breaths before we get into our Shavasana. So try to recreate the same shape you had, but then let yourself explore the feeling of the change and the work you've done. And then when you're ready to allow yourself to come into whatever version of Shavasana feels best for you today. So if you want to stay like this with the pillow and your knees bent, great, go for it. If you want to straighten your legs out, if you want to take the pillow away, if you want to go to your sides or your belly, it's your Shavasana, it's your practice. So do what feels best for you. What's going to give you the best opportunity for the best rest. The most comfort.
Allow your breath to begin to deepen and lengthen. And start to invite subtle and slowly increasing levels of movement and wiggles to help your body just prepare for moving into the rest of your day, whether that's something big or something small. your tongue over your teeth, stretch your head, stretch your arms, whatever feels good for you. And when you feel ready to start to slowly bend your knees one at a time and place your feet back on the ground, roll over to one side and use your hands to help you come up to a comfortable seat. And as you become upright, once again, just take a few moments to just resettle yourself into the upright position. And when you're ready to let your hands rest in your lap, over your heart, or palms together, just to take a moment to just be grateful for your time, for your energy, for your effort, and the space to move. Thank you for sharing your time, your energy, and your space with me again today, and have a wonderful rest of your day.